Facebook ads suck. Before we go into the actual video, I want you to know that Facebook ads suck for most people, for most service-based businesses and for most e-com businesses. In this video, I'll be focusing on service-based businesses, which is my specialty. We made like $3 million in 2023 alone. And so in this video, I want to give you actionable advice on how you can actually set it up so it's going to work for you. And because I only have 300 subscribers, you bet I'm going to give you some stuff so you can grow and I can grow as well. And unlike a lot of tutorials, which I've seen myself when I was starting out on YouTube, I will give you actual examples of my clients' accounts and my own own account so after I show you how to set it up you will also see how it looks like on the actual account that spent 5, 10, 15 thousand dollars and more. First thing I want you to know that if you have no social media presence no personal brand, no nothing, don't do it. I mean, you can watch this video so you can learn how to actually leverage Facebook and personal branding when you are ready, but don't go right away and don't run Facebook ads expecting God knows what, because it's not going to happen. Facebook ads are a multiplier and it targets people on top of the funnel. That means that everybody that is on Facebook is browsing, checking out memes, family, they are not there to buy, unlike PPC on Google ads where people have search intent, so they'll be buying from you. And if you don't understand that basic concept, you're going to waste money. Now, if you have all that, let's just just get into the actual setup. I want you to go ahead and create a business manager. No, we don't run ads from personal accounts for multiple reasons, so create a business manager. Here's how you can do it. First thing you want to do is you want to go to this website and go ahead, create yourself a business portfolio. I will not be able to show you that because I already have one and I cannot create anymore, but this is as simple as it gets. So go here, click businessfacebook.com on your computer, make an account. And just to show you that I can't do it right now, it's going to take me to my page. So we'll go ahead, create yourself an account. And once you've got that, we'll be connecting your stuff in a second. After that, make sure that your page is in here as well. If it's not, just click add, add an existing Facebook page, or if you don't have one, create a new Facebook page. So you will just go in here, you will type in your Facebook page URL and you will connect it. After we've got that, go straight to the ad accounts, create new ad accounts. As you can see in here, I've reached my limit. So you will press that button, you will create a new ad account where we will be running all your ads, connecting all the assets, pixels, etc., etc. So press that. Just give it your business name, press accept, and I'll see you there in a second. This is what you will see when you first go into an ad account. Maybe except for the payment method. So yeah, first thing I want you to know is that you have campaigns, you've got ad sets, and you've got ads. Now let's talk about the actual ads. Now I always start with images because it lets you lower cost per impressions quite drastically in the beginning, especially if you have a limited budget and one results faster than later. And if you've got videos, you could have ideal customer, but if your video is not good enough, and I'm talking about the first five to 10 seconds, they'll just click off. So Facebook will look at that person and not pick up that fast that, okay, this is who I want to be targeting. With images, it's straightforward. You've got all written on your phone, which I'll show you in just a second. People are more likely to click. And I've done both of those approaches, images and videos to begin with. Videos work as well, but to give you more context, we had a video B2B and that video spent around $2,000 without much results. I think cost per lead was around 100 bucks. But the next month, the cost per lead kept dropping from, from 100 to 70, 50, 40, and that's where it got stuck. And we were happy with the leads quality. But it took a while for Facebook to figure out who are we targeting. After you've got enough data, then you put video creatives. Now I've already have one right here just to show you. Remember, we are doing cars, we are doing dealership stuff. So click done. I don't really use those. I don't use this one, I don't use this one. I leave these off because Facebook sometimes messes it up and it's going to put your headline in the wrong place or it's going to cover some text on your ad creative and it's kind of annoying. Now we are targeting people that struggle with credit scores and we have to sell them a car. Here is the part that you actually want to know your target audience because if you don't, any approach is going to burn your money. So what I like to do, I go on Reddit, I go on Facebook groups, and I try and make controversial posts disguising myself as a customer and I just listen to people's pain points. Again, keep in mind that the best feedback is on both extreme ends. So to give you a stupid example, you have a protein bar that tastes like a brick and it's super dry and you go on Reddit, you see people complaining that why are protein bars so dry? You can't eat them, it tastes like a brick. So if done correctly, your ad would look something like, are you sick of protein bars that taste like powder and brick? Try our new protein bar, as simple as that. So here is an example ad. Really what we are doing in here is trying to target their pain points. So most of those people struggle with credit and they feel judged. So again, tired of feeling judged by your credit score. On the creative, as you can see, we already have credit score that relates. Make sure that those two are matching and they are not confusing people. Okay, so I've just noticed I did put the wrong thing in here. As you can see in here, the ad set says 640 credit, but this is for buy here, pay here, and it was meant to be for buy here, pay here. I've got another creative that is targeting a uh, higher credit, which I'll show in a second, but let's just go with this first. So again, uh, we are qualifying people. We are addressing their pain point. 
but we are also telling them that it's only for people with down payments of three thousand dollars and on the bottom you can put your location you can put your phone number don't use these ai copies they don't really give you anything uh headlines pretty good Dr drive today regardless of credit i've been told no we say yes to car finance Again, reinforcing what we have on the copy and what we have on the creative. Now, the call to action, my favorite is learn more. This is going to depend on your specific situation, but I almost always use learn more unless we are literally telling people to download something or book a call. But even then, I think with book a call, we still use learn more as we, we push them to the landing page. Now, the best part, instant forms and how to properly use them. So a lot of people have been burned with instant forms uh, because they just can't use them. So let's let me show you how it's actually done. Press create, test lead form. Now you're going for higher intent. This is going to let people verify the information they're sending you. Click background image. This is going to use the ad copy. If you have time, you can make this custom, which again will be on the top displaying everything and reinforcing what you already have on the ad. So oh, headline is something like we get you driving in 24 hours and we'll get in touch with you in the next five minutes. Now questions. This is where everybody gets it wrong. So what you want to do first, you want to add questions, but not just any questions. You want to add multiple choice. You're going to press multiple choice lead filtering. Now, not all the accounts are going to look the exact same because Facebook is constantly running out changes. So first question is filtering out people that can't work with us. So in that case, I'm asking them how soon are you looking to get a car and ASAP, one to two weeks, two to four weeks. And now kicker is here one month plus this is not a lead for us we, because we want to get customers as soon as possible so this one is going to be a lead this one is going to be a lead as well lead as well but this one this is not a lead for us we don't want those people and just like that we have filtered out everybody that is going to be shopping pricing around clicking things and not doing anything second question i want to figure out what is their down payment and if they actually read the ad copy so again what is the down payment if we can approve you what can you come up with now this is the prime example of when i say facebook changes stuff when you don't even notices i made this ad account i think two days ago because one of my customers couldn't use his and as i was shooting this video i've noticed that this is a new option so lead filtering in here it looks entirely different on my other ad account and i'll show it to you in just a second but if you can see in here it says only the first question can be used to filter leads on the other ad account i can use any other question to filter out leads so in this case i would be asking the down payment question first so let me just show you how i would do it on the other account and then we'll change this one so as you can see in here we are on our b2b account and this is me in the swimming pool trying to sell business owners uh so we would go to questions and in here you can see that there is conditional logic instead of lead filtering and in here the own a business i can filter out people that don't own a business i can filter out people that want to build personal brand acquire new customers or manage all leads so let's just say i don't want those people so i'll press close form now over time facebook is going to pick up that this specific group of people is not my ideal customer so it's going to stop showing it to those people now how is that beneficial to you because in that case, I was going to ask how soon are they looking to get a car, which again, if people want to get it a month, two, three, five months from now on, I don't want them. If they don't have down payments, I don't want them. And the last question I would have asked here is what type of car do you want? And let's say we have no truck, so I would disqualify anyone that wants a truck. Things like that. But just so I show you the whole thing, I would change this question. What is the down payment you can come up with if we approve you? So let's say no down payment. Let's say this one is 500. Let's say this one is 1500. Let's say this one is... $3,000 plus. Now, this would be a lead, but any of these would not be a lead, and this is how you would do it. Description, I would leave that empty. You want to be asking them for email, full name, you want to be asking them for a phone number. Now, very important here, if you notice that you're getting a lot of fake phone numbers, fake emails, this is most likely because people autofill this information. So they literally take their phone and they give you information that sometimes is outdated. So if you have that problem, all you have to do is go here, add question, and you want to ask them, what is your phone number? And that's it. That should solve your problem. That's what solved it for us. Privacy policy, provide the link you've got on your personal website. Message for leads. This is the successful message. The one on the bottom is not successful. Now in here, you want to be filtering them down even more. So even though they just gave you information, you want to funnel them down to your actual landing page. So I would say something like, hey, stop, don't leave yet. If you fill in the survey, we can get you approved today. Now we would add the link to the survey. And the call to action will be get approved now. And after that, they'll go to the landing page where we are going to warm them up so that they can actually start working with us sooner and they're more likely to answer any kind of phone calls or SMS. Now, message for non-leads. You can do whatever you want with those people. And like I mentioned, I want to give you some sauce. So with those leads, 
you are never going to get the person that filled in the form and they didn't go through. However, in some industries, people actually still can use it to their advantage. So for example, if we target people that must have those down payments, and we like this is non-negotiable they have to have those down payments we will disqualify anyone that doesn't have the money now but circumstances change so let's say someone is going to get their money if we put the exact same form the exact same text like we did in here stop don't leave if you fill in the survey we can get you approved today on the message for non-leads if they actually fill in that survey even though facebook will not charge us for this lead on facebook and will not get their information if they filled in the survey they will actually land in our crm or your crm or whatever you use to store the data now it's not going to tell facebook to get more of those people because we just disqualify them and sometime in the future you can actually convert them into a customer so just one thing to keep in mind after that you're going to create the form i'll close that but you can create it we scroll all the way down you have to be using a crm i don't care if you say you're going to call the lead as soon as they come in because 90 percent of people don't and they lose money i've been there i've done that i've literally seen it and i've dealt with people that i was handling their whole sales department and one day they just woke up and they said like well i'm going to call the leads now so i can pay you less it's like okay cool guess what they never called the leads and we stopped working the same month because the leads were just falling through the cracks because nobody was getting to them in time and why does that matter think about this if you're in the office in the toilet on a traffic light and you fill in this form if you get a text within 30 seconds a phone call in 30 seconds you might answer it but if someone waits five hours a day the next day you get a call from an unknown number you're not going to pick it up so what we do we put all those people in the crm we have our ai and the system call them text them instantly and nurture them over time and this is the best practice i've made a whole video about this you can check it out somewhere in here on my screen uh watch that because this is a complimentary video to this one now if you think this is going to be expensive think how expensive it's going to be if you blast all your facebook budget and you don't get results so another very important thing you want to have all the tracking you can so url parameters and we are going to put UTM parameters in here. So I'll, I'll put that in the description so you can copy it. But what this gives us is basically what place are those leads coming from. And you can use that for tracking which campaign, which ad set, which ad are actually getting you sales. I'm going to show you some data in the next five minutes or so. But for now, just keep in mind this. So many times I've seen business owners make those ads and they focus on cost per lead instead of cost per acquisition. So they might have two campaigns. One campaign is getting cheap leads, the other one is getting more expensive leads. And they shut down the campaign that is more expensive without knowing which one is getting the sales. Month, two months from now on, they'll have no sales and they'll have to shut it down. So tracking is very important. Okay, now I showed you how you can create yourself a form, create an ad, create yourself an ad set campaign. I'm going to show you this account that spent £3,000 and how I would analyze the metrics that you will see yourself. And after that, I'm going to give you a few tips on the software that I use, software you can use for creating offers, how to position yourself, how you can use software to benefit you at most, and a bunch of other things related to Facebook marketing. Not necessarily related to Facebook tutorial. However, I really feel I have to put this in this video because a lot of tutorials, they tell you this is how you do Facebook ads. Follow me, that's it. But they don't give you any more context and I feel like if I was to do the same thing I would be no better than all the gurus that show you the setup and they leave you to be. I want to show you what I use to make the ads work and I hope that if you follow these tips you will actually be able to make yourself a lot of money because Facebook really is a great great platform but people don't know how to use it. So, so what you can see in here We've got some new metrics. We've got hook rate, conversion rate results. I'm going to break it down as easy as possible. So first of all, we've got hook rate. Hook rate is three second place divided by impressions. So this is a way if you run image ads on checking how good is your hook rate. Most of these ads were images, so you don't see that much of hook rate in here. Next one, you've got conversion rate. So out of all the people click on the form, actually submitted a form. I try and keep that stuff around 20% on average and if it doesn't work, I try and make sure that the form has the exact same message. So if you have a lot of clicks, but not a lot of conversions, something is wrong with the form. You might either be asking too many questions or asking the wrong questions. Next up, we've got the results. Results is how many leads you've got, how many sales you've got, depending on the target you set on the campaign level, this will be different. Reach is the amount of people that's seen your ad at least once. Cost per result is something of an argument for a lot of people because they say go for the cheapest one. I'm not a fan of that. I think there should be balance between quality and quantity it will depend on what type of business you are doing and it will depend on what type of lead quality you want just to give you an example again from a dealership perspective we can get you leads for five dollars that will be shit we can get you leads for fifteen dollars that will convert or we can get you appointments for 30 bucks that will always show up so pick your poison 
budget and bond spend is pretty obvious. CPM, cost per impressions. Now, if this is expensive, that means you're targeting the wrong audience with the wrong message. So if I'm trying to sell luxury cars and in my ad copy it say, hey, are you 18 and you just finished school and you want a new car? Click the link below. It's not going to make any sense. Or if there is a luxury car on the image and you say, hey, are you looking for affordable cars? Doesn't make sense again. Now, link clicks. Link clicks means whoever clicked your forum clicked to get to your landing page. Now, there is also another metric called clicks all. Clicks all means anyone that presses see more on your ad, that counts as it. If they click, if they click like, if they click share, click comment, that counts as one as well. Now, in terms of click through rate all and link click through rate, those two are very related. Click through rate all percentage, I would keep that around two to 3% and click link through rate should be half of that. I know this might be a bit confusing. Honestly, saying it so many times confuses me as well, but this is how it works. If one thing is broken, I would always try and digest what is going on wrong. So if I see a super high CPM, it's the audience. If I see low clicks, I will try and figure out what is going on on the form. If I see low clicks all, I'll try and see what is wrong with the copy. And this is how I would try and digest on what is going on. If you have any questions about it, by the way, feel free to comment, ask. Uh, I'm happy to answer all the questions. I know this is not the easiest thing in the world, but at the end of the day, we all want to make money. So ask away. And that would really be it. I will make a separate video on how to scale and how to grow your ad account as well so that's the tutorial part now if you feel like you know how to run this stuff feel free you can click on this video but if you want to learn how you can make more money on facebook ads i'm going to be talking about tools now that you can use and a little bit more context on what affects running facebook ads and getting results on facebook ads a lot because you don't just need to run facebook ads and that's it you need to know what you're doing believe me or not ever since i started doing youtube and giving out value to people and instead of chasing them they chase me i've had so many people that want me to help them and it translates into facebook instagram linkedin all the platforms and the best way to do it is just build your personal brand through both channels so you want to be posting short content on your instagram you want to be relating to your audience tiktok is for goofing around and just them knowing as a person and YouTube is for bringing value which is what I do right now let's say you do coatings on luxury cars people that want to buy coatings and protect their vehicles don't care about the prices they care about is this guy going to mess up my vehicle and by doing this content and showing the, your process your work you build trust trust that then is translated into money for your business so this is one of the best ways to do it now you have personal brands you want to run Facebook ads okay cool now another thing you have to keep in mind is that Facebook ads are long-term approach if you go into it thinking you're going to make some quick buck you're wrong you're going to burn money i've had people converting after two months three months for dealerships where sales process is long sales process can be shorted for businesses like car detailing or pressure washing something that doesn't need that high of an spend. something that doesn't require a lot of money upfront from the customer but at the end of the day facebook needs to learn and if you have no data if you have a fresh account the reality is it will take time for facebook to pick things up for you and if you're not willing to wait you're not going to succeed and that's just my opinion and believe me or not we made $3 million in 2023 for my guys. So you could say that I know what I'm doing. It was across all the industries and they literally all had the exact same thing in common. So what are you supposed to do about this? Well, I made a whole video about this. We use CRM. If you want, you can use the exact same that I do. I'll give you free templates that you can implement in your business. Most important bit is really speed to lead and nurturing those people. Now those two, they will literally carry your business. Because ask yourself, what is the last time you've seen something on Facebook and you bought from them instantly? Because the answer is a zero and I can guarantee you that. I've literally had friends with me. We went on a trip to Paris and this guy kept getting text messages from his HVAC, HVAC, I'm not sure how you say it, the guys that installed the AC. And he had 20 messages in the chat history and I was asking like, why don't you just block them? He's like, oh, I don't want to. He's like, why not? Because I'm going to buy from them in two months when I need it. And that's when I was like, oh shit. So that is the thought process. I also had some lady coming into us to the CRM and 25 messages later, without a single response, she decided to buy a car from us. And again, I've got videos on all of these bits and bobs. You can have a look at it later. But if you want to start using Facebook ads, I would highly recommend that you use a CRM or at least any CRM. If you are confused at any of this, just drop a comment. I'm happy to help. I've got consultation calls. You can just click the link below and ask me anything you want. Happy to help. Hope you enjoyed the video. Drop a like.